Welcome to the Buckhorn Podcast. My name is Randy, and I am all alone. This is a new little segment I'm doing called Just the Tip, and I am going to be giving some life lessons and experience notes and things that you should do being totally unqualified to do so. These are just going to be my ramblings and rantings and things that I've observed. They are not going to be scheduled. It's just going to be, if I see something that sparks a thought, I'm going to record. So with this one, today I was at work, and there were two gentlemen in the line in front of me at a supply store. And as I'm waiting my turn, one of them said about the other, his coworker, he has no filter. And he was speaking of a character on the show Gold Rush. Um, and I quickly picked up who he was talking about when he described long, straight blonde hair and a long blonde beard, and that he says what he thinks. And he said about that gentleman and his coworker, they have no filter. And I kind of chuckled, and the, the employee chuckled behind the counter. And we, I, I'm observing this interaction, and I realize how many times people have said about me, he has no filter. And a lot of times I say and think things before I think them through. Something that I did very early on with one of my very best friends who has drummed in many bands with me, um, all of them complete successes, which is why I'm here talking to you today. His wife, for the first few years we knew each other, literally had said she hated me because I was so sarcastic and I would say things without thinking and I was I was always quick-witted, but what I would say was not always beneficial to the scenario. And so as he said that, I'm like, hey, I could probably relate to this guy. Uh, my my best friends, who I'm also related to, my cousin Jay, uh, Jeff, we call him Jay, and GW, who's been on here, my uncle, we're, we're very close to each other, but people do not understand our relationship because we are very crass and very harsh with each other. But in the end, we know each other's heart, we know where each other's coming from, and we've been through a lot together and helped each other through a lot. So we're able to do that. But in my day-to-day -day interaction, especially online, I've had people get upset with me. And a lot of times I say, I don't care. Uh, a lot of times I don't care. I tend to say what I feel and what I believe and I wear my heart on my sleeve. Uh, but a lot of times I hide stuff uh, or say things that I don't fully believe or mean just to get a reaction. And I had somebody text me about something I said online and said, Hey, you need to check out the three gates of speech. And I said, you know, what's the three gates of speech? And so he said, look it up. So I Googled the three gates of speech. In the three gates of speech, he told me it was a uh, Buddha that said it, but I've actually found some things about it. The three gates of speech go, before you speak, let your words pass through three gates. At the first gate, ask yourself, is it true? At the second gate, ask, is it necessary? And at the third gate, ask, is it kind? Now, this has been attributed to Buddha, but also Rumi and even Abe Lincoln. Uh, but as I did more research, I find that it really tend, it, it appears to stem from the Quakers that have been using something called the Three Sieves from the 1920s. And the story there goes that a little boy ran indoors from school and hollered out for his mother, Oh, mother, what do you think of Tom Jones? I've just heard that. And she cuts him off and says, Wait a minute, boy. Have you put what you've heard through the Three Sieves before you tell it to me? The boy responds, Sieves? Mother, what do you mean? And she says, well, the first sieve is called truth. Is it true? The little boy says, well, I don't really know, but Bob Brown said that Charlie told him that Tom, and she cuts him off again. That's very roundabout. What about the second sieve? Kindness. Is it kind? He thinks and says, kind? No, I can't say it's kind. She continues, now the third sieve, necessity. Will it go through that? Must you tell this tale? No, mother, I need not repeat it. She then imparts her wisdom. Well, then, my boy, if it is not necessary, not kind, and perhaps not true, let the story die. As I was standing there today thinking about this guy and how he speaks without a filter and how I speak without a filter and can relate, I quickly came back to this thought that somebody texted me a month or so ago. Hey, maybe you need to think about these three gates before you speak online. And where I was speaking was a very... Uh, kind of inclusive group. It wasn't on Facebook. It wasn't out in public for everybody to see online. It was in a certain group of people, of many of whom I've met in person or I've known for many years. And a lot of them know me, know my humor, but some don't. And some of the things that I said towards somebody, uh, once I look back after thinking about it, could be taken very wrong. One of the things that this morning, as I'm waiting in line, 
popped up was all of the stuff that I've said on Facebook, all of my sarcasm, that quick wit, that humor that I see doesn't always come across that way. So I guess the challenge that I'm going to put out or what I would set, tell everybody listening is think about those three gates or those three sieves. Anytime that somebody you disagree with says something, be it uh, regarding politics, religion, sports, way of life, morals, whether or not to use terms like fur baby or whatever else we've talked about on our full episodes that drives you up the wall and you want to react, think about those three things. Think about the three sis. Is it true? Is it kind? And is it necessary? And if it can't make it through all three, you really need to think about why you're even saying in the first place or if you should. Then, once you can get away from social media and doing that online, start carrying that into the workplace. And most importantly, carry that into the home where your family members, your loved ones are, that you don't realize how harsh you are talking to them, how they may perceive those words. So a lot of times I would say suck it up or you took it wrong or you misunderstood and push the fault or the blame on whoever is reading or hearing what I have to say. Sometimes we need to check what we're saying. What I'm basically telling everybody right now is watch your mouth. And that's just the tip.